What's up guys, welcome back to the vlog. This behind me is Oceanside, California, which as some of you may know, is home to one of the most popular casinos in Southern California, Ocean's Eleven. This place is pretty historic. I know some of you might not care about that, but I think it's pretty cool. Even though I'm relatively new to poker, I've heard some pretty awesome things about this place, and I've only been here once, like forever ago. I played some 1-3 and didn't really get much experience in, so I'm here to change that today and bring you guys along for the ride. Actually, a bit of a slow roll. This is my second day here. I think you guys should know that. I played yesterday for like eight hours and did pretty well. I won around $1,000 and I decided to make a two day trip out of it. So got a random little hotel, stayed the night and I'm going back there today to play some more poker. So all that being said, what you guys should know is it's nine handed with face masks. That's the only requirement. So contrary to my last video where I played short handed in Arizona, in nine handed, you're not incentivized to go wild pre-flop whatsoever. In fact, it's mostly a showdown driven game with nine people at the table. So a little bit of a different game plan today. I'm gonna try to make some hands and win at showdown. Obviously a few bluffs here and there is always normal, but uh, that's the plan for today. A little more dialed back. All right, that's it for now, guys. The only thing left on the to-do list is grabbing some lunch before playing cards and finding a place to fly this guy, which I'm not sure if I'll be able to, but you guys will know in about two seconds. Let's go. All right, we are underway here playing some 2-5 No Limit at Ocean's Eleven. I also sat down to the warm welcome that is a bomb pot. Apparently, they were doing a bomb pot every single dealer change, and right when I sat down, one of those dealer changes was taking place. So, $25 from everyone, and lucky for me, I'm on the button. So, eight ways to a flop of six, deuce, three, with two spades and one club, and when I look down at my hand, it's not too bad at all. I've got two overcards and a flush draw. So when the action checks all the way to me, people seem to play fairly straightforward in these bomb pots and it doesn't really seem like anyone has much since the action checked all the way around. So I just put in a bet of $65, planning on taking it down right now or just continue to bluff on the turn or river, maybe even realize my equity and make a hand here. Only the big blind makes the call, so we go heads up to a turn card, which is the seven of hearts. And when he checks it to me, I think you can go either way between checking and continuing to bluff. I decide to just check back and see what happens on the river. If he does arrive at the river with a marginal hand, then we can maybe bluff then. Anyway, it doesn't come to that because the river is the queen of clubs, improving me to top pair in what should be the best hand, given how the hands played out so far. And indeed, I think that's the case when he checks it to me for a third time. Now I'm gonna go for some value here with top pair. I put in a bet of $200 and my opponent quickly makes the fold. Nice to take down the first pot of the day with all this dead money in the middle. A little while later, there's two limpers in early position and then the cutoff raises it to $30 on my direct right. I'm on the button looking down at seven six of spades and decide it's good enough for a call in position and the limpers call as well. So four ways to a flop here of ace, jack, 10 with two clubs and no spades, so nothing going for me, but somehow the action checks all the way around. The turn card is the king of clubs, completing the flush and putting four to a straight out there. Once again though, the action checks all the way to me and I think this is a spot where I can profitably start bluffing because if either of the initial limp callers had a queen, I would assume that they bet on this turn card after the preflop raiser checks the flop. And the same goes for the preflop raiser. If he had like a flush or any sort of straight, I expect him to bet here. So I get the feeling no one has a queen. And even if someone does have like two pair or even a set for that matter, it's gonna be pretty hard to continue across two streets. So I'm gonna start bluffing now. I make it $75. A little bit ambitious, but so far I think I like the play. And only the initial razor to my right makes the call. So we're going heads up to a river, which is the nine of diamonds. 
a pretty good card to, I think, blast away on since he only has around $250 left. So when he checks it to me, that's what I decide to do. I move all in, thinking that it's going to be pretty hard to call with anything but a queen here. And indeed, that seems to be the case because my opponent starts thinking for a very long time before eventually deciding on a call. So that's going to be bad news. And to add insult to injury, he makes the call with pocket nines, which seems pretty insane to me, but I guess this time it worked out. So props to my opponent in this hand, and we lose a medium-sized pot here. The turbulence is not over, however, because I get into another awkward spot in this next hand where the straddle is on and there's an early position open to $40. The action folds to the small blind who re-raises to $150. And then I look down at pocket queens next to act in the big blind. Slightly uncomfortable situation because the small blind has around $1,000. So I don't think I want to 4-bet, especially with the early position opener left to act. Folding seems out of the question, and calling doesn't seem necessarily exciting because we can just get squeezed out from the initial razor. However, in these somewhat low stakes games, that doesn't seem to happen too often. So I end up opting for a cold call here, which I don't do too often, and then the early position Razor calls as well. So three ways here, and I'm right in between these two players. The flop is not very good. It's king, seven, six, rainbow. The small blind is gonna have a lot of strong hands here, including obviously ace, king, pocket aces, pocket kings, even the occasional king, queen, or king, jack. So when he checks it to me, I'm not gonna fall for what I think is a pretty obvious trap. I decide to check it and the early position Razor, who actually himself can have a king pretty often, checks it back. So still three ways here to a turn card, which is the seven of spades. This time the small blind does bet around 250, I believe it was. And there's nothing I can do here except just make the fold. It seems unlikely that he's betting a worse hand here except for like maybe pocket jacks or pocket tens. But what seems much more likely is that he's got a strong hand that decided to check a very dry king high flop. Especially with the player left to act behind me, I think it would be pretty bad to put in a call here. But maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, this time I decide to just fold and we'll actually never know because the early position player folds as well. A couple of hands later, action folds to me in the cutoff and I look down at ace king. I make it $20 and then the player on my left raises it to $85. Action folds back to me and we each have around 12 or 1300 at this point. So I decide to put in the 4-bet because I think this particular opponent is capable of 3-betting wide when my particular range should be somewhat wide in the cutoff in an unopened pot. I guess what I'm trying to say in not so many words is that Ace-King should still be ahead of most hands he's raising here. So when it gets back to me, I put in a 4-bet and make it $320 and he doesn't think for very long at all before making the call. So I think he's actually got a pretty strong hand here. And when the flop comes down eight, seven, six rainbow, I don't know, it could go either way. It's certainly fine to bet small and then maybe check brick turns, but I don't think I want to blast away here because I have the feeling my opponent in this case is not looking to fold over pairs like jacks, queens, maybe even kings. So I decide to just check and sort of wave the white flag. And when he bets $400, I just make the fold and indeed my opponent shows pocket kings. So we were in some serious trouble there and would have been in a very difficult spot if my opponent had raised once again pre-flop, but at least we get away with losing not that much. So the session is obviously not going great and I add money to my stack once or twice before finally looking down at another playable hand a few hours later. The straddle is on in this hand and I look down at ace queen from early position. So I make it $35 and get called by a player in middle position, the button, the small blind and the straddle. So lots of different players are going to see the flop on this one, which comes down jack 10, nine with two spades heads up or maybe even three ways. This is definitely a board where I would advocate starting a bluff, but 
with so many players in the hand, it seems kind of suicidal. So when it checks to me, I just check it. And then a player on my left bets $70. Being out of position against an aggressive opponent, this isn't really a hand where you want to just check call. But things change when the button and small blind both make the call. So now I'm getting a much better price to hit my outs. So I make the call and we go four ways to a turn, which is the six of spades. So now we are open-ended with the nut flush draw. Once again, I check it. And the action checks around this time, which is fairly interesting because I feel like if anyone had a stray or a flush, they would be putting some money in here on the turn, but it checks all the way around. So when the river comes to the three of diamonds and the small blind checks it to me, I decide that given the information provided on the turn, which is that it seems like no one really has much, I'm going to get a lot of credit here if I put in a bet because most people don't bluff into multi-way pots. So I do something that I don't often do and try to get through three different opponents here. I put out $275 and it seems to be an epic fail because the player to my left makes the call. The other players fold right away so it does seem like no one really had much but unfortunately couldn't get through this first opponent. However, when I get caught bluffing, I just show my cards right away because I like to see what I get called by sometimes. So I just flip it over and then something crazy happens where my opponent gives it the tap of defeat and mucks his hand. What the fuck? What is happening right now? Um, I think I have an idea what's going on here, and that is that my opponent in this case misread my hand and surrendered the pot. This is the first time that this has happened to me at a poker table, and to be honest with you guys, I kind of struggled with the ethics of it. Like, part of me wanted to maybe split the pot or do something other than just take this poor guy's money, but he right away got up to go get more chips. And everyone at the table assured me that it's just part of the game and when someone mucks the winning hand, just take the money and move on. So that's what I did. I obviously got very lucky and ended up winning a pretty big pot. And before this question gets brought up, no, I don't think he called with a worse hand. Given his mannerisms and the speed at which he folded, I'm fairly certain that he had a better hand, especially since he had players left to act behind him. So calling with like a really weak ace is completely suicidal. And again, I totally think that he had a better hand, but he just misread my cards. Whew, crazy hand. So it seems like things are on the comeback trail now and even more so when I get moved to the main game and I get a nice welcome to the table when the button opens to $20 and I look down at pocket kings in the small blind. I raise it up to 75. Interestingly enough, the big blind on my left makes the call and the initial raiser on the button makes the fold. So not exactly what I was anticipating, but that's all right because we've got a great hand. When the flop comes down seven, four, three, I actually decide to check it my opponent in this case has around $270 left in his stack. And I feel like a cold call is often gonna consist of pocket pairs like tens, jacks, and queens. And I expect all those hands to bet here for protection and put me on an ace king or ace queen type holding. So I kind of lay the trap and check it to him and it seems to work out because he puts in a bet of $100. Typically I'd advocate for just a flat call here, but Seeing as he only has $170 behind after the $100 bet, I decide to just get all the money in because there's certain turn cards that could hinder my opponent from putting more money in the pot, like an ace, a diamond. Although I don't expect any of those cards to suddenly give me the losing hand, my opponent might feel otherwise if those turn cards do come. So let's just get the money in now. And my opponent agrees with that because he makes the call. The run out comes what I think is fairly clean. I just flip it over and we are good. So it seems like he had pocket queens or pocket tens and luckily we get the maximum in this one. Shortly after that, there's an under the gun open to $25. The small blind makes the call and I look down at 10 nine of diamonds in the big blind. I decided to make the call. So we're gonna go three ways to a flop here of king 10 nine. 
The small blind checks, I check it to the raiser, and he puts in a continuation bet of $45. When the small blind folds, I'm looking to put in a raise. I'll definitely be raising this board texture with all sorts of combo draws. So with a hand as strong as two pair, I'll certainly be raising as well. I make it $200 and my opponent makes the call. Turn card is not my favorite. It's a five of hearts, so I think betting small or checking are both fine, given how the board has changed now. This time I opt for a check. My opponent bets $260 with around 700 behind. On the surface, this might seem like a pretty standard spot to just call and evaluate the river, but my opponent in this exact hand, I think is a fairly good player. So I started thinking about what hands he could be doing this with, and honestly, I feel like all the hands that I beat would be checking back. And what I mean are hands like ace-king with a heart, ace-10 with a heart, pocket aces even, king-queen, etc. I just feel like after getting check raised on the flop, he's not going to be betting all of those hands. He's just going to take the free card and try to get to showdown. So. I decided to give my opponent credit in this situation and make a pretty conservative fold. I feel like with this bet, he's just going to have me crushed a lot of the time with either a flush, a flop straight, a set. So not really the outcome I was looking for, but later on he told me that he did have ace queen of hearts. Whether or not that's true, we'll never know, but I think I'm okay with the play. In the last hand we'll go over today. The player on my right open limps and I raise it to $25 with ace jack suited in early position. A player on my left makes the call and then the button raises it up to $125. Action folds back to me and seeing as we're both fairly deep, myself and the button, I decide to make the call and the player on my left calls. So we go three ways to a flop here of jack 6-4 rainbow. I check it, the early position player checks, and the button down bets to $105. Again, such small sizing, I think it's okay to check raise at some frequency, but given that there's another player in the hand who I'd like to keep in the pot, I feel like he's got pocket 10s or pocket 9s or something, I decide just to call, and indeed the player on my left makes the call as well. So we're still three ways here to a turn, which is the six of diamonds. I check it, the player on my left checks, and this time the button checks back. So definitely think I have the best hand at this point. But when the river comes a low innocent card, it's a question between balancing and just going for value. I feel like I'm not going to have a lot of bluffs given how the hand has played out so far. So should be checking if I were protecting my entire range. But... This is 2-5, and when I feel like I got the best hand, I'm just going to disregard balance and go for some value. It seems like the button doesn't have much, and the player on my left should be sitting with, like I said earlier, pocket 10s or 9s, or maybe even a worse jack. So I just put out a bet of $275. No need to go too big here. Turns out it doesn't matter much because both of my opponents make the fold. So we take down a nice healthy pot to end the session. Shortly after this hand, after playing for quite a few hours, I decide to rack up and head to the cage. Alright, so that's going to be a wrap for today's session. Excuse the poor lighting and poor audio and everything else that's low quality, but this is uh, kind of reflective of my mood after playing like almost 24 hours of poker in two days. Anyway, no complaints though because I did win some money today, so that's always nice. Also won yesterday as I mentioned earlier, so all things considered, more than happy with this little two-day poker trip. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the hands. I had a great time here and I definitely recommend at least checking this place out once if you're in the California area. Where the vlog will go next, I have no idea. I can't guarantee anything. Maybe LA, maybe Vegas, maybe back to Arizona. 
you're gonna have to stay tuned. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for the support. Thanks for tuning in and good luck at the tables. Peace.